How does the current state of web standards compare to a few years ago? Well, I think um, you know things have definitely changed quite a bit. There's been a lot of dramatic uh, improvements in what you can do straight in the browser. Um, uh, what I what I will say though is that I've I look at it. A few years ago, I was a developer out there doing a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. and I feel like back then it was easier than it is now. So it's, it's both, there's a lot of great advancements and we've gotten pretty far. I think some of the things that we used to say, you know, used to require Flash or used to only be able to do in print, you can now do in many browsers. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of, a lot more testing that you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be much more careful about how you use things and which browser, you, you know, which, which functions work in which browser and so on. So the job of the developer has also become much more complicated. Right. Mm -hmm. Memorizing that matrix of things that wh sure. what works where, right? Yeah. Uh, how should developers approach proprietary features or edge cases? Uh, carefully. Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's that that would be one of those things I think is is has become complicated is just, you know, I when I look at those when you look at those features I think I think you can use them if it's particularly important to your project, but at the same time, you have to kind of, I think you have to make a really good case for using them. Um, I kind of tend to think, like we publish articles on this on these topics, for instance, and I always kind of say, this is, this is so you know what's out there, but you probably should only use this if you really have to right mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, that being said, there, there are a lot of different like libraries and polyfills that often kind of smooth out those those rough edges where browsers aren't supporting that. But um, but I think there are so many new features, and it seems like you know there's a new one added uh, pretty, pretty regularly. Sure. So you have to kind of cautiously approach that and think of, do I really need this, or am I just using it because, well, it looks really cool. Right. So. Right. How do products like Edge, Shadow, and PhoneGap fit together? Do you see them as part of a, an overall tool set? They are, um, they, and they definitely fit together nicely. Uh, you can use them all together. I think, you know, it depends on, it really depends on what you're doing um, and whether, you know, because Edge, you can do really great animations and, and you can actually build those. I've seen people use those in a PhoneGap app and then mm -hmm. you can use Shadow to, to, to then debug the, you know, the browser issues. Um, but. But that being said, you know, I think many people are going to approach it more as like as something that, you know, independently, um, like I've used Shadow quite a bit and, and not necessarily with on a phone gap app. Mm -hmm. I was just doing, you know, it's a browser based app. Um, you know, f uh, you can do obviously phone gap without you doing edge. So, and we have a lot more stuff coming that I think starts to build this broader, um, list of products that all fit in the same general umbrella, but um, you can you can use them together, but it's not like a direct straight workflow necessarily because it all depends on what people are doing. And it's and what people are doing is kind of always amazes me. There's just so many people are doing, everybody has their own stack. Everybody has their, <laughs> right. you know, so. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. So last question for you. There was a roadmap from earlier this year where Flash was uh, going to focus on gaming and video. Right. How do you see it? shaping those two spaces over the next year or so? And do you anticipate that it's going to be used elsewhere? Well, obviously, you know, the white paper still lays out that, that roadmap. And I, you know, I think it does a pretty good job. We're very open about where Flash is headed. Um, I think you know, you're seeing it, it really gaining some traction, I think, in gaming. Um, gaming is one of those things where you can do HTML5 gaming, but there are, even if you talk to people doing it, there, there are some issues you have to overcome and sometimes it isn't quite ready yet for the complexity of the game. Um, and what they're looking at is even 3D games, like console quality games mm -hmm. in the browser. So, um, and we're, we're starting to see a lot of things coming out with that and I think it's, it's looking pretty impressive. For video, um, I think there's there's more you'll see coming, and, and the roadmap lays that out better than probably I could right here. I but I think in both areas those are playing to Flash's strengths, as opposed to trying to fit it, you know, fit it being a, an across the board solution uh, for all the you know for everything. Well, that being said, things like Flex and stuff haven't gone away. They're mm. still out there. They're still being used, and in many cases, like for instance, Flex can fit. Um, uh, 
a particular app you might be building better than you might be able to do it in HTML5 yet, right? So there are some features in Flex um, that, that allow you to do that. So I think in that case, it's not gone for app development, but I definitely think it's, it's um, all the Flex developers, for instance, I talked to are carefully considering which they need to go to. Can I do this in HTML5 or can, or do I have to do this? And does it have features that require me to do it in Flex? Um, and so it's going to play a role. It's just probably less of a role, like less of a dominant role than maybe it has in the past for app development. But I don't think it's going away. And I definitely think those, those skills are going to re remain relevant um, for, for the next few years, three to five years at least. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you taking the time. OK, no problem.